This is a pretty common car kit. I got this one from eBay. You can get them all over the internet. On the bottom of the car, I have a motor controller and four motors. Both motors on each side are plugged into the same port on the motor controller, so they turn together. On top is an Arduino Mega and a breadboard. There are three IR distance sensors, a button, and a potentiometer. There are two LEDs, a yellow one and a three-color RGB one. The button turns the car control on and off, and the yellow LED indicates when it's on. The potentiometer controls the top speed of the motors. The RGB LED indicates the state of the car control. When the car is just wandering around, the LED is green. It turns red as an obstacle in front gets closer, and blinks red when it is getting unstuck. Every so often the car will stop and randomly turn around for a while, and the LED becomes blue in this state. Let's get started with the new Embryo project. Embryo is all about programming physical objects, so when starting a new project you want to first make agents to encapsulate the physical devices. I'll make a new folder called IO Access, and under that a new folder called Distance Sensors. I'll start with the middle distance sensor, so I'll make an agent and name it Distance Center. Add a controller input node from the input output menu and select the analog pin that the sensor is plugged into. It's very helpful to work with live data, so I make sure I have the correct Arduino model and COM port selected, then click the connect button. A connection program is uploaded to the Arduino and I start getting live data from the sensor. I can see that the incoming signal is pretty noisy, so I need to process it a bit before the rest of the program can use it. I click on the graph icon next to the output so I can get a better idea of what the signal looks like and I move my hand in front of the sensor to see its range. I want the activation to use the full range from 0 to 1, so first I add a transform number node from the math menu and connect to the input activation. I also open up the output graph so I can see what I'm doing. I adjust the input minimum and maximum values so that when nothing is in front of the sensor it outputs a value of 0, and when my hand is as close as the sensor can pick up it outputs a value of 1. Next, to smooth out the signal, I use a value lag node and adjust the lag amount to a high enough number that the signal is smooth, but low enough so that the value doesn't lag too far behind. Now as I move my hand in and out from the sensor, I can see I have a nice clean output signal to work with. The transform and lag nodes are going to be the same for all three of my sensors, so to reuse them I cut them from the agent, make a new function called distance sensor, and paste them into the function. The function will need to take the unprocessed activation value and expose the cleaned up output value. So I click on the external icons next to both so that they are available from outside. I save the function, then go back to the sensor agent and drag a copy of the function onto the screen. To finish the agent, I connect the signal from the input node to the function and expose the output activation so other agents can access it. Finally, I copy both nodes and paste them into two more agents, one for the left and right sensors, selecting the correct input pin on both, and refresh the connection program. Next I'll create agents to encapsulate the LEDs. I make another folder in the IO Access folder and name it LEDs.
The yellow LED agent is very simple. It only has an analog output node and a suppressed activation node to encapsulate access. The RGB LED is a little more complicated because it has one signal each for the red, green, and blue LEDs. I'll skip over this agent. Check the RGB LED example project for more details. With the LED agents complete, I refresh the connection program. Most of my embryo projects have a top-level agent which I like to keep updated while I work. I'll rename the default agent to Top-Level Control and open it for editing. To see what I'm doing, I'll drag all of the I.O. agents that I've made so far onto the node screen. I can move my hand in front of the different distance sensors and see their values. and drag on the LED activations to light up the LEDs. And of course if I wanted to I can connect a sensor activation to an LED to see physical feedback on my project so far. Next I'll encapsulate the other inputs to the controller, the button and the potentiometer. I'll put them in a new folder called Inputs. As explained in the button example project, the button uses a digital input node that's passed through an above or below node to get a trigger from the signal and a timer to limit how often the trigger can fire. I rename the timer start output trigger to clicked and make it external so other agents can use it. The potentiometer is simply an analog input node with the output activation made external. The motors are the last physical items that I need to encapsulate. I'll add another folder to the IO access folder and name it motors. I'll start with the left motors. First I add an analog output node, select the correct pin, then refresh the connection program. Next I can play with the activation value and see what it does to my motors. An activation of zero makes the motor spin at full speed backwards, and moving the activation to one makes it turn full speed forwards. But to get the motor to stop spinning I need an activation of around 0.75. Like most agents, I use a suppressed activation node to encapsulate access. Motors can run forward and backwards, so instead of the default input range of 0 to 1, I want to use the full range from negative 1 to 1, where negative 1 is full reverse, 1 is full forward, and 0 is stopped. I click on the minus sign icon next to the input activation to give me access to the full range. I also click the minus icon on the activation and suppressed activation outputs, otherwise the values will be clamped. I add a transform number node, and set the activation and input minimum inputs to use the full range as well, then connect the suppressed activation value to the input activation and change the input min value to negative 1. I set the input activation value to 0, which is what I want the value to be when the motor stops running, but my motor is running backwards. I adjust the output minimum value until the motor stops, which as I determined before is when the output activation is around 0.75. Now when I move the input activation, the motor behaves as expected. The wheels turn faster than I want them to at full speed. I want to use the potentiometer as a physical way of adjusting the car's top speed. 
To do this, I drag the potentiometer agent onto the node screen. I connect this activation to the activation of the transform number node and change its blend mode from add to multiply. Now the potentiometer acts as a gain that I can use to physically adjust the car's maximum speed. To control the right wheels, I copy these nodes, create a new agent called Motors Right, paste the nodes in, and select the correct pin. After refreshing the connection program, I'm done encapsulating access to the physical devices of my robot. Reading and writing data is usually what takes up most of the processing time in an embryo project. Now that my IO access is set up, I want to check out how I'm doing on resources. On the Profiler tab, I can see how many agents are in my project, how many total nodes, and how many milliseconds per second the program will need to run if all nodes were to process on all updates. It's a good idea to keep an eye on this value and make sure it stays well below 1000. I can also see how many microseconds per update and per second each of my agents and nodes are using. Also, when I upload the final program, I can see how much program storage space and dynamic memory my program is using.